Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting build of blue-black midrange that features the ingenious prodigy plus Proft's eidetic memory combo. So the eidetic memory, a legendary enchantment that draws a card when it enters, says we have no maximum hand size, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we've drawn more than one card this turn, we get a number of plus one plus one counters on a creature we control, where X is the number of cards we've drawn this turn, minus one. So we don't get any counters for having a regular draw step, but any additional cards we draw in our first main phase, for instance, can result in additional plus one counters. So we can play memory on turn two, since we draw a card off of it, it can immediately give us an extra plus one counter. So if we can play a one drop on turn one, that's ideal, and we can actually do so thanks to Ingenious Prodigy, which we can cast for x equals zero. It enters as an O1 with Skulk, so it can maybe attack past larger blockers. And then in the late game, of course, we can sink additional mana into it, so it enters with more plus one counters. Counters. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if the Prodigy has a counter on it, so we can remove it in order to draw a card. So turn one Prodigy into a turn two memory results in a plus one counter on Prodigy, which can then remove the counter on the following upkeep to draw an extra card, which in turn lets us put more plus one counters on our creatures with memory, put them on the Prodigy, rinse and repeat, and we're drawing two cards per turn. So that's kind of the engine that keeps the deck going. And then to complement those synergies, we're also playing four copies of Duelist of the Mind as three toughness, power equal to the number of cards we've drawn this turn. So it also works well with the memory engine and then flying and vigilance. So it can play offense and defense quite nicely. And whenever we commit a crime, AKA target anything at all, we get to draw a card. And if we do discard a card only once each turn, so that can also help fuel the memory. So we can put more counters on the duelist. And then the ledger Shredder also fits perfectly into this deck since we have such a low curve, only one, two, and three mana cards. We can easily cast two spells in the same turn to connive, which in turn lets us draw and discard, which again helps the memory and helps us find more cheap interaction to commit more crimes. So that also works quite well. And then uh, to help commit more crimes, we have Deep Cavern Bat as another flying creature that can disrupt the opponent's hand and also makes for a very nice recipient of additional plus one counters, especially when facing the red aggro decks. So we can build up a huge life linker. And then our interaction also includes Cutdown as spot removal. We've got to go for the throat at two mana. And then some additional discard with Duress as another cheap spell we can cast. So we can easily double spell with a Ledger Shredder, maybe take away removal spells that would otherwise kind of break up our engine. And then consider another cheap card draw spell that can uh, tie everything together. And then topping off our curve, four copies of Steam Core Scholar, a 2-2 Flying Vigilance. And when it enters, we draw two and then discard two unless we discard an instant or sorcery or a creature card with flying, which is most of our deck. So this will often draw two cards and only discard one. Can also discard the rest if the opponent's empty handed or maybe some of our removal spells if they don't quite line up. And then by drawing two cards, we also get more counters from the memory. So it all synergizes incredibly well. And then our mana base has some uh, creature lands as well to maybe finish out the game and the channel lands for added utility. And yeah, otherwise 23 lands total since our curve is so low. And uh, hopefully we're going to end up facing lots of small creature decks since that's where this strategy shines, getting to kind of trade resources and eventually pull ahead with our card draw engines. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and uh, yeah, I'm tempted to keep this. We've got Prodigy, which I could even play on turn one to go with the uh, memory on turn two. Yeah, I guess that's fine here. Since we have some more expensive plays in hand already. Could also decide to play a bat first to check out the opponent's hand. But the sooner we play our enchantment, usually the better. Opponent with Kumano. And the rest next turn could also be pretty nice in combination with a Deep Cavern Bat. Or we could play the Scholar to get some more power and toughness of the Eidetic Memory. Phoenix Chick with a counter. Can they take out the Prodigy, perhaps? Just a Monstrous Rage. So we've got a nice card draw engine going here to draw two cards per turn. And I think it's time to check out if the coast is clear, maybe starting with the duress. And then I can still decide to maybe 
do something else. Okay, Recruiter, Codebreaker, so we can grab another Monstrous Rage, and then how close is the opponent to transforming the Codebreaker here? Only two instants in Graveyard. So at that point, Recruiter is a bit more impactful. And then I could also start growing my Life Linker, which is not a bad way to go about it. But uh, I still want to keep the Prodigy fueled so it can actually draw me an extra card next turn. And then next turn, maybe with Scholar, we can put a bunch of counters on the bat to make sure we don't get run over. So there's the Codebreaker, one unknown in hand. And it seems to be a removal spell. All right, that's too bad. So our opponent top deck pretty well. Now we don't have a life linker we can grow anymore. Would love to find some removal spells. Another bat. Okay, I guess that's the plan now. I guess we can start with consider. Cut down. I wouldn't mind, although... I wouldn't be able to play it alongside the bat since our land enter stamped. But I'll still keep it. Take the Recruiter. So we've drawn two cards. Get two counters on the bat. Prodigy can trump if needed, but hopefully we can hold off an attack here. Opponent's looking at the graveyard, so it might be another Codebreaker. And just Phoenix Chick attacking. Okay. And now I can go with a Steam Core Scholar. And discarding Duress. And then I can still cast Consider. Find another Prodigy, sure. And then cut down an answer to either Codebreaker or Etching. But uh, now we do want to get all these counters on the bat. To attack for 6 and gain 6. And uh, do we keep cut down in hand? Sure. Just want to make sure we don't get blown out by a monstrous rage in response to me casting cut down. But yeah, a 6 6 deep cavern bat will get the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, I'm not going to say no to a hand that features the eidetic memory. Good mix of interaction here. Might want to hang on to consider until after we play the memory. So I can go turn 2 bat, turn 3 memory, plus consider. Put on the blue-green. Maybe an artifact deck. Yep. Double Zodic Glyph, Schooner, Double Sentinel. Well, I'll just take their only 2 mana play to slow them down. But they do have a powerful hand if they can deploy it. And they also have a Boseju to blow up my enchantment, although we do have a backup. So, play the memory. They might also need Boseju as their third land drop at the moment, so don't know if they'll be channeling it. Consider, and then we're looking for more threats that can apply pressure. Prodigy is also good with the memory. And do we see Boseju channeled? We do. Will give us an extra land as well, which never hurts. And then next turn we'll get the Memory plus Prodigy going. Although we might want to take out the Sentinel. Wouldn't be able to take out the Artifact that they enchant with Zoetic Glyph, since it's an Artifact. So, a few things to consider here. If I take out Sentinel now, at least they won't be able to curve Glyph into another Glyph, since they will only have the one Artifact. So it does have its merits here. So, I guess what we can do is play Memory, play a 1-mana Prodigy just for x equals 0, and then still go for the throats. And then put the counter on Prodigy, so it can draw an extra card each turn. And then in the future we can grow the bat to try and outrace the opponent. Our hand's not the best right now, so hopefully our opponent sticks to the uh, script that we laid out for them. 
the next turn we'll likely see the Sentinel. A Ledger Shredder's not bad, and an Odawara can bounce something as well here. Cannot quite do both, so maybe this is an Odawara turn, and then save Shredder so we can maybe double spell and draw an extra card with it. Now we have to be careful what we bounce here with the Soaring City, because if I bounce the Artifact token, our opponent does still get to discover. If I bounce the Glyph itself, then that's no longer the case. Alright, so now, what do we want to do? Maybe bouncing the token itself still makes more sense, even though they get to discover. Since we'll have to deal with the consequences at some point. And then I do want to let them attack first, since if they discover into a Ginger Brute, they would be able to still attack with it. So we'll bounce the map token. Glyph goes to the graveyard and finds Surge Engine. Not bad. Triggers Wormlet. And our opponent still has a Zoetic Glyph left. But we're also establishing our own engine here. The rest can take away the Glyph, so that's perfect. Might still want to consider firsts. Although we'll get to connive as well, so... Might end up casting a 3-drop. Another Shredder. Shores can go. And then... I've already cast my second spell, so the second Shredder is no longer going to trigger. So I could save that for next turn alongside Consider, or I can fire off Consider now. And find another Prodigy. Doesn't seem super needed, although I guess what it allows me to do is put the counters onto the bat. And then play Prodigy for X equals 1 right now. So that can still keep the memory engine going. And get a nice attack in for 4. Alright, so pretty nice back and forth here. Opponent can still level up the Surge Engine, and they top decked a third Zoetic Glyph, that's lucky. Alright, so we're potentially in a bit of trouble. Wormlet a 3-3 Death Touch, so I don't have the best blocks available. Could jump with the 0-1 Prodigy, I suppose. While I still can. And then we would love to find some more interaction here. Although Cutdown doesn't have any targets anymore. And speak of the devil. Would have been a great answer to the engine before they explored. Now, I guess we play Shredder. Can still cast a Duress just to enable Connive and get rid of the Cutdown. There's also a Creature Land we can activate. So yeah, if we just leave back Restless Reef, it can hold off some attacks potentially, but there's still an unblockable Surge Engine. I think I prefer the Connive. Find the Duelist. So how many cards have we drawn this turn? Basically four cards total, so I'll get three counters. Which means I can make a 7-7 seven, seven bat. If I discard Duelist, this grows up to 2. So 7, 8, 9 plus 4 is 13, so it's not quite lethal. But uh, yeah, I kind of like the idea of sending in the Restless Reef. And then if we grow the bat, we are not too afraid of dying on the crackback. Even though I now pause the Prodigy engine. And then we can mill Sir Ginger. Bones at two, so we've got multiple lethal flyers now. Fall to eight. And that should do it. All right, a very fun game here against the artifact deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, Prodigy plus Memory, that's what it's all about. So don't mind just playing it on turn one. Can 
can always adjust our game plan depending on what the opponent does. Turn one mountain. And Swiss spear. So cut down is somewhat tempting. Or even playing the bat to make sure they don't disrupt my memory combo with a prodigy. Because yeah, what happens if I memory, opponent just takes out prodigy next turn, then I guess we still get to play bat plus cut down, which isn't bad, but we no longer have that engine. If I play bat now, we can maybe take away their only removal spell or make them use it on the bat. Although bat's also a good recipient for potential plus one counters. So it's not a simple play here. I think we start with the bat. And then C, Case, and double Monstrous Rage. Well, Rage is not always great in multiples. Taking the Case takes away their late game. Although, Cut Down may no longer be a great answer to the Swiss Spear. I guess it depends if they tap out or not. So we're definitely going to see at least one Monstrous Rage, if not two. That just hits us for five. And passes the turn. So now, Eidetic Memory plus Cut Down may not work if our opponent casts Monster Rage on Swiss Spear in response. But I do want to play Memory before I play Scholar, so I think it's still acceptable. And then I can put either a counter on the Bat or the Prodigy. I think for now Prodigy, and then next turn maybe the Bat. Could have also... Try to keep up blue mana for consider, had we drawn it. But now if our opponent taps out, we can try to cut down the Swiss Spear. I'm somewhat surprised they didn't just play the Foundry last turn, but I guess they wanted to keep up a one mana instant at all times. So I could cut down now, if our opponent drew another instant in the meantime, we get punished. So I think we just let this one slide. Since we can potentially make up for the life loss with a deep cavern bat. And this will shrink back down to a 2-3. Alright, so we have options, but I'm kind of digging Scholar plus cut down. And then we want to play Scholar, threaten to put counters on Deep Cavern Bats. And if they maybe burn it in response, we can cut down the Swiss Spear at least. Or I could still put the counters on Prodigy. But if this works, it's probably game over. Although if they do have the burn spell, we lose Bats, I take out Swiss Spear. And then opponent can cast Case to refuel, but that's maybe not a game I hate to play. Sure, we'll try it. Alright, that worked, so now we have a 4-4 bat, which is likely to win us the game. Opponent still keeping up mana at all times. I'm sure they have cut down on their radar. Now a slick shot show off instead. One unknown in hand. So I can block, let them make the first move, and then we can cut down accordingly. Monstrous rage, so yeah, I guess we'll cut down the show off now. And that should be game over. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got the Prodigy plus Eidetic Memory engine, plus some cheap interaction, so I'll keep. Put on to red-black. So, now maybe it's better to duress instead of going for Prodigy on turn one, since they might otherwise remove it before we draw any additional cards. Stone Brain, okay. And return the favor. So opponent's got a very unusual deck. I'll just grab a go for the throat. So this can essentially change the target of a removal spell. If 
for now, I guess play Eidetic Memory and then next turn Prodigy. Or we could play a one-powered Prodigy now and then next turn Eidetic Memory can start drawing extra cards already. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Although if our opponent has seen Prodigy decks in the past, they might suspect that we have Memory in the deck. And they can try and get rid of it with a stone brain, but I guess since it's four mana total, it's gonna be a little too slow. Okay, and then the rest plus memory looks good. And the end and deadly cover up. Both are potentially annoying. Probably go for the end, and then Deep Cavern Bat can maybe snipe the deadly cover up. Let's see. Spell or ability. I guess it could use Return the Favor to kind of use the bat against us. Yeah, I still take the cheaper spell for now. Find the Ledger Shredder. And hit for two. We'll see if they fire off the Stone Brain, maybe naming Shieldred. Wouldn't be surprised. It's gonna be a demand answers to discard and draw. And the Stone Brain goes digging. What do they name? Ingenious Prodigy, all right, makes sense. We already have one in play, so they can get rid of more copies. Our opponent is tapped out, so the bat can snipe deadly cover-up. Opponent taking a good hard look at our deck list for maybe future stone brains. And with the untapped land, we can play a Ledger Shredder into bat and hope they don't have two sweepers in hand here. And I don't think we'll need these removal spells. At least cut down is a cheap answer to the restless vents. So go for the throat, Kengo. And opponent does have a go for the throat, so still take the cover up. And then they have to spend a turn removing the bats to get their sweeper back. And for now we get to attack, deal some damage, draw a few more cards. And maybe dig towards another deep cavern bat or duress. All right, so we can uh, cast a couple Considers, which will also synergize with the Eidetic Memory. All right, opponent does take care of the bat right now before we could maybe draw into a counter spell. And then we're looking for more discard, basically. This will trigger Ledger Shredder. Could not quite get there. Okay, uh, get one more redraw potentially with Consider, although at this point I might want to deploy my Restless Reef. And then uh, doesn't matter too much here. So your opponent can cast Deadly Cover Up. Get rid of another win condition. I do get one turn to maybe attack with a Restless Reef, but next turn they've got it covered. So yeah, we could be in a bit of trouble all of a sudden. Hope they don't name Ledger Shredder. But uh, yeah, that's what they exiled. So the one in hand's gonna go away. Can put my opponent to two, but dealing those last couple points could prove to be challenging. Start with a Consider. Duelist works. Do I cast it now is the question. I think I still put him to two. And then I guess actually it's to one since we get an extra plus one counter. And then I don't really want to mill myself even though we help them collect evidence by milling them. All right, opponent's at one. So if they have any pain lands, they wouldn't be able to tap them for colored mana, but doesn't appear to be the case. into the fire to discard and draw. And leaving Field of Ruin and Demolition Field available. But now we can switch gears and play Duelist. And that can uh, maybe get the job done next turn.
did they find another removal spell? They know about cutdown, so the vents is not gonna get anything done. And Abandoned Mire can maybe be channeled as well. And another Stone Brain. Alright, so opponent got kind of close to stripping away Hull or Wing Conditions, but couldn't quite get there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing black mana this time. Do have double duelists, so as soon as we find a black source, it unlocks duelists, cast some one mana crimes, and then we can keep digging through the deck. So it's not the worst hand. Should be able to find a black source eventually. Turn one mountain and a Swiss spear. Okay. At least a vigilance on duelist will come in handy. And a lightning strike to take care of it. Eidetic memory to draw. Probably want to play that now. See if we can find a black source. We can. And then the rest verse cut down. I think we just cut down the Swiss spear now while we can. And then we don't kind of rely on the opponent's board state to commit a crime with a duelist if that's what we want to do. And then by committing a crime, we draw a card, get a plus one counter for memory, put on plotting a show off. All right, could also go duelist plus bat. That still commits a crime. And we can maybe start growing our life linker, which is often how we win these matchups. And another memory is probably not needed. Okay, double Monstrous Rage, Godric Codebreaker. Well, the uh, show-off with double Monstrous Rage represents a lot of damage. I do still have Duress, which can take away one Monstrous Rage. Yeah, let's say our opponent draws a land, then they can play Godric and play show-off to enable Spectacle. Yeah, the pressure starts adding up, so maybe I do take Godric here. And then they can decide next turn if they want to double Monstrous Rage for a lot of damage. Or if they maybe play another creature first, and then we can duress one of them. And I can always discard duress to the scholar, so it's never going to be a dead card here. Alright, opponent's going for it. So they hit us for 10, but we do have a life linker which can keep growing. So don't hate my spot here. And then I'll go for Scholar. See what else we draw. Can't quite cast Go for the Throat. Could discard Shredder as a flying creature and then still cast the rest in case they picked up something they can cast. That commits a crime, so we draw an extra card, which in turn gains us more life with a bat. And at this point, Prodigy might be too slow, and I prefer another Scholar. Even though I could go for the Throat and Prodigy. Alright, just another show-off. So this grows. Can gain us 5 life up to 9. And, uh, yeah, opponent needs to string together some cheap cantrips here. Like maybe Ancestral Anger. Just plotting another show-off. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got the Prodigy plus Memory combo, although can't actually play Prodigy on turn one. Still gonna try it. And then instead of playing Memory on turn two, we could play a Duelist. And then next turn I could double spell Prodigy with Memory. Opponent's got the cut down. So facing Golgari mid-range. So establishing a powerful card draw engine is going to be important. Question is whether I 
wait on playing Prodigy and for now play Scholar. Nah, I think I still like uh, Memory plus Prodigy. Because then if they take out the Prodigy, next turn Scholar will pick up a bunch of plus one counters. Sentinel is acceptable. Glissa would have been a bit worse here since that can threaten to destroy our enchantment. Alright, no line drop could be awkward. So maybe go for Scholar now. And found double duress. One of them can go. And then we'll uh, load some counters onto the Prodigy. Can't quite attack past the Sentinel. Could double block Sentinel, even though it's risky in the face of instant speed removal on our 3-4. Looks like they may not have it. Finds a land. Alright, so now I'm happy to double block. If they started with the attack, it would have been a lot more risky. We still have our card draw engine. And now we want a double spell with a Ledger Shredder. Shredder plus Bant looks okay. Maybe take an impactful 4 or 5 mana card. One Eidetic Memory can go. And uh, yeah, Portland certainly has some impactful cards. Frill back an answer to Memory, although we still have a backup, so it's not a disaster. And then I guess Shieldred's the scariest card since I don't have an answer to it right now and it punishes me for drawing cards. The Planeswalkers we should be able to pressure quite well. And then I could put some more counters on the bat so it doesn't die to a cutdown. Or I can grow a Prodigy to attack right now. I'll put them on the bat, diversify a little bit. Don't want to trade for the Dread Knight. And now a bat can also maybe attack past a token from Sorin. Frillback goes after our enchantment, which, yeah, has been doing a lot of great work for us. Keep drawing with the Prodigy, find our final memory, so we can duress away one of their Planeswalkers, maybe still play memory first. And a Duelist, excellent. A land can go get to commit another crime, which draws us more cards, which gives us more plus one counters. And I'll happily keep a go for the throats. And maybe one scholar can go now, or memory, since they've already answered the first one. All right, and then I don't think we care too much about Sorin, even though it does make flying blockers. Asho can dig a bit deeper to find a sweeper, perhaps. And, uh... Still have a counter on Prodigy, so that's enough for now. Can grow with a Ledger Shredder. And this actually has a Skulk, so it can attack past their creatures. Point is a 9. And we might be able to close out the game next turn. Sorin is fine. Opponent actually has the Boseju to blow up my enchantment. But uh, I don't think we'll need it anymore. So yeah, opponent had a functional draw, but uh, our synergies were just a little bit too strong. And drawing two cards per turn also doesn't hurt. Take out the flyer, and that should be good enough. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Got a lot of options on turn two. Facing red aggro, surprise, surprise, opponent. Plotting a demonic ruckus. Let's maybe play the deep cavern bats to check out their hands, and then next turn we have options, including maybe Shredder plus Cutdown to enable Connive. Okay, well, that's not a lot of lanes and a lot of burn. So taking play with fire as an answer to the bat makes sense. Then our opponent would probably go for Swiss Spear, play Ruckus, 
And then Swiss Spear still dies to cut down once it goes back to my turn. Yeah, I think we take the play with fire. If they draw land, they would probably go Swiss Spear into Etching of Kumano. Or they might want to take out the bat right away, who knows. Right, they did find a land. And our opponent goes for double threat. And I imagine they'll play Ruckus, or they can keep it to enable celebration on Godric. Alright, so we'll take a bit of a beating, but at least we can go Shredder plus Cutdown now. The rest can take away one Lightning Strike, can't quite take both. Yeah, if we play Memory first, I maybe get some extra counters out of the deal, but Bat still dies to a Lightning Strike. So I think Shredder plus Cutdown makes sense. And then they can only take out one of my two creatures. And if I discard a non-land card, we can ensure the Shredder doesn't die to the Lightning Strike. So, can get rid of the Cutdown. So next turn we can play Memory and Duress. Take away the second Lightning Strike. And then our Shredder should be large enough to prevent the uh, etching from being too relevant. Now if they drew a land, they can play Godric as a 4-4, but they did not. So they will be taking out Deep Cavern Bat here, and I still want to play Memory plus Duress. Connive with a Shredder. And take a Lightning Strike. No point in putting counters on the bat, since it's gonna die here. And then we're trying to outraise Godric with our Ledger Shredder. And especially if our opponent doesn't draw a land next turn, that should be feasible. If they do, we still have a game on our hands. Because it would be Godric with a Celebration, so then they get to hit us pretty hard. But nope, it's gonna be Ancestral Anger. Times two. Which finds us another bat, conveniently. And then if we can find any other spell we can cast, we get to connive again in our turn. We did not. So now, am I better off attacking with Restless Reef? Hit the opponent for 8, put them on a 2 turn clock. How do we die? If our opponent goes Godric plus Play with Fire next turn, I guess we would die, so all they would need is an untapped land to present lethal, so I'm not loving that. So instead I could just attack with the Reef, leave Shredder back on defense, and then wait another turn on Bat. Yeah, I think I like that more. Could also mill myself if we were worried about Squee coming back out of the graveyard. So they did find a land, but now Shredder should be able to hold the fort. And then keeping the bat so we can maybe double spell next turn and get the memory going. Opponent is attacking. What does that imply? I guess another monstrous rage would enable celebration on Godric, which means this goes up to 7 power. So we just block the etching then. It already has a monster roll. And then we're not dead to Monstrous Rage, since that would be 7 down to 1. Although I guess it would burn us out next turn, but then we have the Bat. Because I can't afford to lose the Shredder here. Alright, get to untap, find Prodigy. That's excellent. So, Bat first or Prodigy first? Well, if I Bat, they just play with Fire It and response most likely. Uh, but I guess that's fine. And they're just gonna go face, maybe hoping to top deck a Lightning Strike then. They could break her. So yeah, we cannot beat a top deck Lightning Strike. I can play Prodigy for X equals 3 here. Connive. The rest goes away, gives us an extra counter, 
and then I can load my plus one counter onto a deep cavern bat if I'd like. Should be able to present lethal next turn regardless. Alright, did the top deck a lightning strike? Moment of truth. Just to play with fire. Alright, get back Codebreaker, play it. Doesn't quite do it here. And then we have a lethal in the air for next turn. So yeah, super close game. Essentially at one life here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Can the rest on turn one. And see our opponents on mono black. They might have a combo in there that they're trying to assemble with a case. So next turn I can play my bat to take their bat, so we probably want to take away the drown for now. Now a 6-6 six, six flyer is going to be a bit of a problem for us since we only have go for the throat to answer it. So I mean we're not forced to take away the bat, I could just take away the archfiend even though it's still pretty far in the future. And then cut down can answer the bat anyways. Could also play a ledger shredder but then they can take my bat. So I think bat take archfiend's not a terrible idea. Our opponent just picked up a land. Sure. And then we'll see if our opponent wants to take our cut down. They do. Untapped land enables scholar. Can okay, maybe discard one ledger shredder. Another bat. Do we even care at this point? Opponent can play a case and then they might be empty handed. So maybe I just keep double shredder. And then next turn we can uh, enable connive on one of them. And uh, I'll keep the duelist. Okay, as long as they cannot answer the bat to get back Archfiend, we're in decent shape. But anything could happen. Bat takes Duelist. And another case enables Connive at least. So we'll get some extra counters for free. case is not always great in multiples, because now I can block the skeleton and they still won't have solved the case. So don't mind if I do. Had they attacked first, I maybe would have let damage through. Now I'll probably keep land in hand for knife purposes. And then Scholar and the Shredders can keep attacking. Mirex can start making 1-1s. One yeah, I'm glad we took the Archfiend since that would have been a huge headache that we didn't have a great answer to. Opponent with an all-out attack. Not really interested in trading the bat. But uh, can get back cut down, which in turn gets back Duelist. So maybe a bit of a desperation attack or the opponent setting up a sweeper anyways. And then we'll wait to cut down in our turn so we can enable connive by recasting the duelist. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. This might have been a genius play if they were actually sitting on a sweeper, because then by clearing the bats they don't have to worry about giving the cards back afterwards. But uh, yeah, turned out they were kind of on empty and we get to rank up. So yeah, got a nice set of games in here with our blue-black draw deck that uh, got to combo off with eidetic memory a couple times. The synergy with uh, Prodigy, of course, is the main kind of build around in this deck. 
and then we have lots of cheap spells to commit crimes with a duelist. We've got lots of flyers to get in the way of opposing slick shots, which are of course quite popular in the best of one ladder. So yeah, the deck's good game against the red aggro, but uh, can also hang with some of the more controlling decks if we can find some discard spells, and then we can always get rid of removal in matchups where it doesn't line up. So yeah, any deck that can cheaply draw cards and disrupt the opponent is gonna have uh, decent matchups all around, and this is no exception. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.